gonna be a fireside chat today. Three weeks ago, I had the most unfortunate uh, event at a stupid ski resort in that I busted my hip. I actually broke my hip. I crashed high speed, you know, living out my Bodie Miller uh, Super G racing dreams and uh, cracked my hip, went into surgery, got it all pinned and screwed. And um, I'm sitting here on a stool today because I'm out for the season. And so after walking in my garage and seeing five pairs of skis sitting in my rack that would no longer be used for at least till next season, I decided it was time to liquidate the inventory so I can create a vacuum that I can then fill when I'm ready to ski again with brand new things. But before I did that, there was a couple of skis that I wanted to, uh, I guess, just get a review done or kind of share some thoughts on before they go out the door. I had a guy call me about these today. This is the Volet Hyper V8 backcountry touring ski. This, if you remember, or if you happen to watch kind of our backcountry skiing um, overview videos, you know, this was going to be my powder ski for the year. What I wanted in a powder ski is something light enough that I would not hesitate to take it out on a powder day, meaning I would not balk at the weight and not be, you know, double, you know, thinking twice about bringing it because I didn't want to slog, you know, a heavy setup that day. I needed something with a big enough footprint and my criteria was I wanted 110 millimeters underfoot. For me, if I'm, you know, to qualify as a powder ski and to make it worth it to actually have a dedicated powder ski, it's gotta be 110 or more underfoot. Uh, the V8 is 114 millimeters underfoot. I'm 5'10 and a half, but I ski this in a 181 and that's like the perfect length for me for a powder ski because any longer than that on any ski or any touring ski, I find it just becomes too unwieldy, you know, in kick turns and trying to uh, tour uh, quickly. So the 181 length was like the perfect length. The width was perfect, 114, and the weight was perfect. These skis in the 181, 1,470 grams. And I have scoured the interwebs and there is maybe one boutique brand in Europe, Moonlight Skis, that makes a ski that is as wide and that is lighter than this. DPS came very close with their Whaler 112 in their old construction, the Tour 1 construction, um, but the DPS Pagoda Tour construction is much heavier now, but it skis awesome. So trade-offs, right? So the Volet V8, uh, what did this feel like? Well, it felt like an awesome powder ski. It floated incredibly well, and the shape on it, it's an 18 meter turn radius, which is kind of a sweet spot, I think, for this type of ski. Uh, I mentioned, you know, Danny has the Whaler, the DPS Whaler 112 and a 178, but that has a 15 meter turn radius. So it makes it very, very turny. And that's why people love it. You know, they say that that ski makes anybody ski better. And it's almost a, you, you're like on autopilot when you ski it, because it just loves to turn, loves to float. Um, the only drawback that's ever mentioned, and it's not even a big deal for some, is that if you really open it up at speed, just a, a, a side cut that tight doesn't really like to arc huge, big, you know, turns on an open face. So this 18 meter side cut in the Volet, for me was perfect. Gave me enough playful feeling when it was just kind of a powder day, when you're just, you know, either skiing through trees or bowls or whatever you'd like to do, um, but it was, enough of a charger that I could open it up, I could arc big turns, and I still felt like it was a stable, you know, uh, platform to ski fast on. I put the DPS R14 binding on it, otherwise known as the ATK Raider uh, 14. DPS has the award this year for pricing, or having the highest priced version of this binding. This is, I think, the most expensive binding on the market. Uh, honestly, I picked it for the color <laughs> and because I couldn't find a, an ATK Raider at the time. And they include the free ride spacers on it, so I don't know if that's really a value or not, but this binding is awesome. For its weight, there's just nothing that compares on the retention, the solid uh, build, the 
you know, the free ride spacer gives you that, that direct contact to the ski. You just feel like almost, I mean, as close to like an Alpine style heel as you're gonna get from a Pintech binding. And with this ski, I paired it primarily with my Radical Pro. This, this is a beef, beefy boot, but it walks so well that if it was any, if it was a powder day and we did not have to do a long approach, I would bring this setup right here because it walks great. I felt like I could do, you know, five laps on a 1500 foot face and it was fine. I was not, you know, I was not drained because I was slogging some big heavy setup. If we did, if it was a powder day and we were doing a long tour, meaning maybe a, just a really long approach going in, uh, I also would use my F1 with this setup and it worked great as well. F1, lighter obviously, walks uh, probably a little bit better than the, the Radical, but it has plenty of power to drive this setup because these skis are so light. The shape on these is a great uh, powder shape, has a nice rocker on it, so, you know, floats well, it's playful. I didn't feel like it was a, like a, a ski I had to ski fast and I had to ski aggressively. People like to say easy skiing, but these are not beginner skis. You know, it isn't just a noodly uh, beginner ski. I mean, it's, it's stiff enough that you, like I said, you can charge and feel like you've got, you know, high performance ski on, but it's still fun. And for me, a powder ski, number one, it's gotta be fun. Downsides. Honestly, the only downside and the only reason I'm even putting these up for sale at all, just to see if somebody else wants to take them, is the top sheet, the graphic. This is probably the stupidest color and uh, graphic of skis you could ever come up with. And I'm sorry, because that's not a knock on Volet because they make great skis. It's just they really could do better, especially when you look at like DPS and their special editions that they come out. They just have some like great top sheets. And when you look down in, you know, as you're coming up for air in between face shots of powder, you wanna see something cool. And when you look at this ski and you just think, that ski looks stupid, you know, it takes like 0.001% of fun off the day. For some people there, you're just gonna laugh and you're gonna make fun of me for even bringing that up. But, you know, it's first world problems. And if you can have your cake and eat it too, why not?